Oh gosh, Maverick. He just tripped me twice within the span of two seconds. All right, here we go. So we're going to start S, A, B, C, D, E, F. Perfect. There we go. <clears throat> All right, we'll start with Hulk. Incredible Hulk. This movie sucks on ice. This thing is so bad. Edward Norton has zero charisma with anyone. Anyone in this movie. He is bad. Liv Tyler is bad. This whole movie makes me sad. Abomination is weird. He looks like a fish monster. The, every, everything about this movie is bad. This is F tier. It feels bad to start with F tier right away. But like, we got it. It's F tier, okay? Yep. F tier for this one. Okay. Um... The CGI in it is horrible. I mean, this was at the very beginning of everything. This was before the MCU was the MCU. So I don't think they knew what they were doing. They didn't know what they had. But still no excuse. Still no excuse. You got to be better than that. Because it was like, it wasn't even back when like, like when, when, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies came out. Like, we didn't know any better. Like, when the X-Men movies came out, it was like, okay, we're trying to figure this out. But at this point, like, we're starting to understand the formula. And this is just, like, what person in their right mind would cast Edward Norton? It's just so weird. Everything about this movie was super weird. Next, Iron Man 1. I'm just going to... We got Iron Man 1 here. The thing that really kicked off the MCU. The thing that brought us Tony Stark as we know him. The thing that put Robert Downey Jr. back on the map after going through tons and tons of problems personally. We got Iron Man 1. We're going to put Iron Man 1 B tier. Now, why do I say B tier? You go back and watch it. It's a lot of fun. It's a great, a lot of fun in this movie. Um, but... I think when we start ranking a lot of these, like you're going to see like it, even though it is the thing that started it. You like that one? Mom Hawkins likes Iron Man. Yes. Yeah. Tony Stark. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is great, especially at the end that like, think about that final scene, right? They have this whole speech written up to talk about, you know, the protector, the guy in the suit, things like that. And he's just, I am Iron Man. And then boom. And was Iron Man the first one? Colson, that's right. Colson shows up trying to talk to Pepper. Yeah, and that's where Shield starts coming in. And isn't the post credit scene? Uh, was it a teaser for Captain America? I think it was a teaser for Captain America. I could be wrong. It could be wrong, but yeah, Iron Man One it was going B tier because it's a good movie. I do not. I do not at all enjoy Gwyneth Paltrow at all as Pepper Potts. I think she, I think she's lame. I think she was real lame. Uh, the next up we have Thor. We're going to do the first Thor. Uh, I'm going from what I remember chronological, chronological order being, I'm not quite sure if it's actually chronological order, but, but we'll see. Um, Okay. Yep, yeah, so we'll go Thor. First Thor. I'm just going to drag it out here for now. Put it there so we can see it. So we have the first Thor. Let's see. <clears throat> this is the first time we, we were introduced to what the soup... I mean, we had... Obviously, we had Wolverine, right? We had Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, but he's like this feral beast. We never really see him, like, use his physicality. We know he's ripped in the X-Men movies, but like, like his, and his abs are nuts. But this is the first time we saw the true superhero body, right? We saw Chris Hemsworth. Wait, did Thor come out first or Captain America? 
I can't remember. But this is the first time you go like, oh my goodness, this is, what did you inject into your body to get it to look like that? Same thing with Captain America with Chris Evans. I like, I like Thor 1 a lot. I know a lot of people think it's lower on the list. I like Thor 1 a lot. I love... I just think his chemistry with Natalie Portman is super fun. Um, I like that we get to... I mean, the way they introduce Hawkeye, I think, is so dumb. <laughs> it's just in the hawk's nest. He's just sitting up there. But um, I love Tom. Tom Hiddleston is incredible. Tom Hiddleston is tr so good at Loki. They absolutely nailed the casting for that. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to put it... I'm going to put it right behind Iron Man in B tier. That's what we're going to do. Captain America Civil War. Or Captain America. I know that I am way higher on this movie than a lot of people. Uh, the Red Skull is a weird, goofy enemy. But it's like, how, how do you make that not goofy? Um, what's better than Captain America going and fighting Nazis? I don't know. What's better than the little guy who's always picked on rising up to like defend those who can't defend themselves? And then the first time you see Cap come out of when he has the super soldier serum put in him. My goodness, Chris Evans. I the, first, the, the last time I saw Chris Evans before this movie was in Scott Pilgrim versus the world. And he just looks like a dude. He looks like a normal dude. Better looking Toby Maguire, normal looking dude. And then he shows up in this. I'm putting I my person this is my personal list. I love Captain America. I think it is. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. So it's going eight tier for me. But it's probably gonna be bottom of eight tier, but it's still eight tier. So that's what it's that's what's happening for me. A tier, Captain America, boom. I think that was it, right? Before Avengers? Was it just that? I'm looking at all these other movies. I think that was it. It was... Hulk wasn't really in the MC. It was, but it wasn't. But, like... It was Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America. And then Avengers, right? Yeah, I that was Avengers then. So we're putting Avengers A tier. It I mean, come on. Come on. Avengers is the thing that like that's what we were building for. Like that when we remember the first time Tolson said the super long name of Shield. And they're like, you gotta, you gotta find something better for that. And then at the end of the movie, he just hands her the card. And it's like shield. You get tingles, get they get chills. Remember the first time you see Samuel L. Jackson in the post credit scene walk up to Tony in the bar and says, "I'm putting together a team." I'm getting goosebumps even thinking about it. What's up, villager? How you doing, man? That that and then everything culminating in Avengers. You have you have. Thor and Captain America or not Captain America, Iron Man, like confronting each other, going at each other. You got, you got freaking Hulk punching Thor on the airplane. That was funny. A lot of good stuff. Oh, well, we got to hydrate. Okay. I got you villager. Cheers. Thank you. Then you got, uh, yeah, Avengers was just a culmination of everything. You have Loki trying to become the god of people. So good, so good, good. So that's where that's where Avengers gone. Now I don't remember the timeline of like when these all came out now after this, so I'm just gonna start going through um what I kind of remember. Let's finish out. Let's go Iron Man 2 next. Iron Man 2. I did not enjoy at all. I've gone back recently and watching watched it. 
I'm gonna put it C tier just because I kind of dig. Um, well, first off, Scarlett Johansson's wig in this is a, an abomination. Scarlett Johansson has one of the worst wigs I have ever seen in this movie. Why did she agree to put this on her head? I'm going to move my camera, actually. I'm going to move that up there. So y'all can see what I'm looking at. Yeah. Scarlett Johansson's wig in this is an, an utter abomination. And for that, it should be down in like... Wait, why is there an E tier here? Let's get rid of this. Get rid of E. How do I get rid of this tier? You know, we'll call this one F. Actually... Delete rail. There we go. Yeah. For for Scarlett Johansson's wig in this movie, it should be the bottom of F tier. But we'll put it C. <clears throat> because I do really dig um Whiplash. He's always like, I want my bird. I think that's kind of fun. I think it's kind of cool how he kind of did the Tony Stark thing where he's in Russia and just builds this crazy suit as well. But he's like, did basically what Tony did in a cave. And uh, let's go Thor Dark World. It's there. It's the bottom of F. Actually, I like Dark World better than Hulk. Hulk is for me the bottom, bottom of the barrel here. But Thor The Dark World is so bad. There is nothing in it that makes sense. It is just so dumb, so stupid. Everything about it is bad. Bad, 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 bad. Not fun. It's not a fun movie. Like, you have moments with, like, Loki. And it's just, oh, gosh, it's so stupid. I, I'm not even, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. It's going to ruin my day. It's going to ruin my day. Um... Oh, yeah. Let's go place Ant-Man, because we technically already did that at the beginning of this. Ant-Man, did I put it in B before? I'll put it there. Because, like I said before, if you weren't here, I find Paul Rudd just delightful. I find Michael Pena absolutely just awesome. So him, Paul Rudd and his band of merry people, they're great. The bad guy, the villain, the uh, what is his name? Hornet? Man, he sucks. He's so dumb. Uh, again, Evangeline Lilly. Hey, Marvel, a lot of these people have great heads of hair. Why do you keep putting wigs on them? That thing is horrible. That is so bad. Actually, you know what? For that C tier. For that bad wig C tier. Okay, uh, let's keep moving. Let's do... Let's do Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. I'm like, oh, I love, love, love this movie. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 is either going to be bottom of S tier or top of H. I want to be, I want to be very sparing with S tier just because like, I mean, that's S tier. Like it's the tippy top. But I think Guardians 1 is so good. It's so funny. It's the first time we saw Chris Pratt go from Andy Dwyer, this chubby, like goofy, lovable, like, I mean, Andy, he's Andy in, in Parks and Rec to like, I mean, that dude got yoked for this movie. Not only that, like the cast is so good. Bradley Cooper is rocket kills it. <laughs> Dave Batista. I had no idea that. I mean, this is the first thing I'd ever seen Dave Batista in and he's so good. Drax is comedy in this movie is funny, man. Yeah. Guardians Guardians one is so, so good. So funny. Ronan, the accuser, a completely forgettable villain. The only thing I remember about him, even though I've seen this movie a billion times, is probably the dance battle at the end and how he just is really confused. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go S tier for Guardians 1. I think they cast everyone super well. I think um, the chemistry between them all is really good. I think the writing is excellent. I think the score is really good. The visuals are great. The, the art style, that's one thing the MCU nails. 
and has nailed like through everything is the art style and how consistent they are even how like with the use of colors and things like that so yeah um yeah guardians one s tier i remember if anyone hates these hates these you gotta let me know you gotta let me know if you hate these uh these tiers these tiers here okay but yeah let me know if you hate these if you like them i'm gonna keep plugging along Again, I can't remember the exact order of all these, but uh, yeah. Ooh, I got to grab something from the kitchen real quick. All right, let's keep plugging along. Keep plugging along here. Next up, let's do Iron Man 3. Um, Iron Man 3 is going to be super low for me. I hate the twist with the Mandarin in this. I know they make a joke of it later on in uh, Shang-Chi, but like, holy crap, the whole Killian... That's going D tier for me purely because I I hate the villain. I hate that Pepper gets like superpowers. Uh, the whole everything. It's so dumb. I love the idea of Tony being terrified, making a, a suit of armor, a suit of armor around the world. But like, man, does the villain suck. And a lot of these movies, if they're going to be lower, often it's because the villain is really bad for me. Um, you know, it makes a huge a huge difference in these movies. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to stick it there. I don't want to talk about it more. It just, that movie is bad. I did not enjoy it. I do not enjoy it. Yep. Don't enjoy it at all. Okay. Um, next. Okay. C Captain America, the winter soldier. This for me was the first time in the MC Maverick. What are you doing? This was the first time for me in the MCU where it went from these are superhero movies to these are movie. This is an actual just good movie. Like you could as a standalone. Yes, it's wrapped up in the MCU, but like you could watch this without ever having watched any of the other ones. And it's like self-contained. The Winter Soldier is terrifying in this movie. His theme is scary like there's that scene where he's like stalking uh black widow and trying to like what does he have like a rocket launcher or something i don't remember he's like chasing her it's like thrilling it's scary oh he's he's so terrifying i think it's i think right now it's the top of s tier it is our number one on this list i think winter soldier is incredible i think it is so 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 good Yeah, I think it's awesome. Um, okay. What are we going to do next? <laughs> Let's go. All right, let's just go Age of Ultron. Let's go Age of Ultron. Now, this is one of those movies that, like, I remember walking out of the theater and being extremely disappointed. And I couldn't pinpoint like why I was disappointed because I was like, okay, James Spader as Ultron killed it. The team killed it. Um, I liked the new additions to the team. Uh, but for whatever reason, I just remember walking out and being super disappointed in every, like I couldn't figure it out. 
Um, so for me, it would go here because I think the performances are really good. I think the like Ultron is a scary villain. Um, I think Claw is dumb. I don't think he's great, but whatever. I guess the plot moving. I think that. Um, oh. It was super lame that they killed off Quicksilver. I didn't like that. He, I mean, he's such a cool character. And then you get Quicksilver in first class, X-Men first class. And it's like the coolest scene in the whole movie. Or was it Days of Future Past or first class? I can't remember. But man, in this, they just kill Aaron Taylor Johnson was done dirty in this movie. Uh, let's go Doctor Strange next. Yeah, let's go Doctor Strange next. Uh, <laughs> I I think it's... I I really like this movie. I would put it low A, high B. I'll do low A for now. We can shift some of these if we need to. But I think Mads Mikkelsen is woefully underused in this movie. I think that um, Benedict Cumberbatch is really good, but he needs to figure out his uh, American accent, I think. He, like, slips into his... English one every now and then it's really weird. Um I think Tilda Swinton's great in it. Um and then Doctor Strange kind of using his mind to win. Like it's not like a big battle or anything. Yeah, it's all CGI, but like he doesn't win by just like punching harder or magicking more. He just uses his brain and outsmorts Dormammu, I've come to bargain. So I like that. I'd go low A right now. I'm going to take a bite of my food. Okay. Next up, let's do... Hmm. Let's do Ant-Man and the Wasp. This one would be probably there for me. Again, I don't... I just think these movies are not great. Like, Paul Rudd is awesome. He's so funny. He's such a likable character as uh, Scott Lang. Scott! Michael Douglas is... Uh, Losing it a bit. Um, I'd, yeah, I'd go C tier for me. I think just the villains are not awesome. Like, it's Ghost and Martin Lawrence is there. But I don't know. Not great for me. Let's do... What are we going to do next? Let's go... All right. Let's do Captain America Civil War. Boom. That's where it goes for me. Again, I love... That. Like, the Captain America movies are so good. I think what resonates with me is I have a deep sense of justice. And so do, doing what's right and both parties are completely convinced they are in the right. And uh, seeing how that like changes everything. Now, I do I think that the comic rendition of the Civil War is better? Yes, but I don't think there's any way they could have done it that way um in the MCU because they'd have to set up a lot more to get to that point. But um the conflict is great. I remember walking out of the movie theater with me and three friends, my brother and two friends and uh remember walking out of the theater and thinking like, oh, everyone is on Captain America's side. He's Captain America. Obviously, you side with Captain America. And he's right. Like, you do what's right, no matter what. And realizing we were not all on that spot, we were split right down the middle. And so, like, legitimately walking to our cars, walking to our cars, like, in the theater, parking lot, like, yelling at each other, like, getting angry at each other for not, not, like... 
not being like, hey, I, w- I was in the Captain America side and then other people were in the Iron Man side. We were like yelling at each other because like, how could you possibly think that's right? I loved that movie. The moment when you see Tony's watching the the video and, and seeing Cap and Winter Soul. Oh, it's so good. So, so, so good. Oh, what's up? Welcome back, Villager. Welcome back. Yeah. So currently Captain America taking the top two spots. And it's crazy how like we'll probably see a lot of these these newer ones with, with without Cap without Tony Stark like they'll start going lower and lower on the list because even though I I don't know I still have faith in the MCU like I think without those people the people that started it is getting harder and harder to, like keep my attention. Uh, Guardians Volume Two. I just rewatched it like a month ago. I did I. I thought I didn't like it as much, but I watched it again, and man, is this movie good. I still like Guardians 1 better, but like the comedy in 2 is great. Drax just gets even better. So good. Yondu's moment at the end is incredible. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Oh, it's so great. Yeah, we're going to put Guardians 2 there. Um, Kurt Russell as Yon, not Yondu, uh, Peter Quill's dad is super funny. He's great in it. And then that moment when you find out that he killed, he basically killed Peter's mom. Oh, it's so good. So good. Spider-Man. Okay. Now we're getting to the ones where we are getting in a list of ones that are just top tier here. Actually, let's do Black Panther first because that came out like right after Civil War. <laughs> Black Panther. Um, where'd it go? I'm gonna put it. Oh man. I'm gonna put it high A for high A for now. Yeah, because I think it's so good. Chadwick Boseman's super good. Michael P. Jordan. Here's the issue. I think Michael B. Jordan is a really, really good villain. I do not think he's a good actor at all. I think when he and and uh, I've heard people, I've heard another guy say this, and I totally agree. Uh, I heard this podcaster Andy Cortez talking about it. Like Michael B. Jordan in the MCU is one of the best yellers, like in terms of like getting the emotion across while yelling. I totally agree. Okay, I think Michael B. Jordan as Black Panther. Or excuse me, as Killmonger is super interesting. I do not think he's a good actor. I think he's incredible when he's like yelling or like whispering. <laughs> but anytime he's just talking normal, I don't think he's very good. But I still think the movie is awesome. Um, I didn't love that the villain though was just kind of a mirror I mean, we find this a lot in the mcu where the villain is just kind of a mirror of the main character whatever um and his reasons for everything he did is super compelling you know like he has a claim to the throne and there you go all right now let's do spider man this is one of my favorite movies of all time. Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm putting it top tier. I'm putting it top of the list right there. Um, Tom Holland is a godsend for the MCU. Tom Holland is incredible. I love Tom Holland. He nails what it means to not only be Peter Parker, but to be Spider-Man. I think... He's the first Spider-Man we've seen, like, because he's a gymnast in real life. Like, we see him, like, actually moving like Spider-Man. Like, like, friggin' Tobey Maguire could barely move during the Spider- Maverick, dog. Hang on, my dog just threw a ball under my desk. Okay. But man, Tom Holland is incredible. Michael Keaton as the Vulture is terrifying the moment when you see when tom holland goes to pick up when peter parker goes to pick up his date for prom and the door opens and it's the vulture it's michael keaton at the door and you realize oh no 
Tom Holland, the girl he's into, is the vulture's daughter. Oh, and I'm not, I've completely forgot about everyone else. We forgot about uh, Aunt May is incredible. Uh, Zendaya and is awesome as MJ. And uh, Ned, his best friend. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love Ned. Oh, he's, they're great. They, uh, Homecoming is, again, it's one of those movies in my mind. Same thing with Winter Soldier. It could just be a standalone movie, a one-off, and it'd be like, great, perfect. If I had to point anyone who's never seen a movie in the MCU to a movie to watch, like I would say Spider-Man Homecoming or I would say Captain America Winter Soldier because they're just good movies. Thor Ragnarok. Holy crap. This is when comedy got real in the MCU. Yeah, again, I don't know if I'm doing these in order anymore, but... Actually, I'm going to do a different one just because I want to get some of the poo-poo ones out of the way. Uh, I'm going to put Captain Marvel down here in D tier. I don't like it. I thought it was boring. I did not enjoy it. I did not enjoy Jude Law in it. Unfortunately, I really like Jude Law. I didn't love him in this. Captain Marvel's going there. <laughs> All right, Thor Ragnarok. Right there. I, I laugh so hard in this movie. I still laugh so hard in this movie. They used... Freaking... Oh my gosh, the music in this is perfect. Taika Waititi does an excellent job. Korg is one of the best things to ever come to the MCU. <laughs> he tries to start the revolution and he doesn't give out enough pamphlets. So all the people that show up is his mom and her boyfriend or stepdad or something who he hates. So, yeah. Comedy is incredible. I love this movie. It's so funny. Tom Hiddleston and Chris Hemsworth, their chemistry together is awesome. Yeah, it's it's such a good movie. So funny. So, so, so funny. And massive ramifications for the MCU as well. Okay. Um, let's see what's next. Oh, my gosh. And I forgot about the Grandmaster. Oh, my goodness. The Grandmaster. Incredible. I'm pretty sure they just went to Jeff Goldblum and like, here, just do what you want and we're going to film it. And he was awesome. Pardoning people from life. When they ask him how old he is, he's like, some, or he goes, you know, people say I'm millions of years old. Others. And just stares at the kid. Oh my gosh. He's so great. So, so, so good. So good. Okay. Um, Spider-Man Far From Home. I didn't love it as much. Um, I'd go here. No, I still think it's good. I'd probably put it there. I didn't love it as much as the other one, though. Still really good movie, but Jake Gyllenhaal is great. I just don't buy the plot line that, well... Wait. Does this movie happen after Endgame? I think it does. Okay, so we're going to wait and do that one. Because I'm pretty sure Far From Home comes out after Endgame, right? Because that's when he gets the glasses from Tony. All right, let's do Infinity War. Infinity War. I mean, what can be said about Infinity War? It was 15 years building up to this point, right? 15? 10, 15? Everything in the MCU was building towards Thanos. The inevitability that is Thanos. So good. So good. All the performances, incredible. And it's catching up with people, like, this is really the first time we've seen the team together, or the team at all, 
since um, Civil War. So they're all kind of split up. You don't know where Cap is. You don't know where anyone is. The movie starts out. You've got... Uh, yeah, it's like Tony and Pepper, right? Just running around. Then Ebony Ma and those guys show up. Oh, it's so good. You get the scene on the school bus with Peter and Ned. <laughs> Incredible. You see the spe Peter's hair stand up. Oh, yeah, I got a lot of bug bites the other day on the river. You see his uh, arm hair stand up. So good. For his spider sense, and he's like, Ned, 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 make a distraction. And he's like, what? And he looks around, and he sees the spaceship. We're all gonna die! So great. So, yeah. Affinity War right now is the top, because everything... I'm getting emotional even talking about it. Everything builds to this point, and then they lose. Everything builds to this moment, and they lose. And the movie ends. Like, I expected a lot. I did not expect that. Oh, this movie is so, so good. And even Thor, like, he shows up. They had to keep him off world for so long because, like, you got the most powerful Avenger. Got to keep him away. He shows up, and they still lose. And then it's just the original Avengers. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Infinity War is incredible. I don't know if anything's going to top it. I mean, I actually know. I, I do know. Because then the next movie, actually, the movie after that we got was Captain Marvel, right? Yeah, we got Captain Marvel. It was not awesome. There was one other movie we got as well. What was it? Oh, it might have been Ant-Man and the Wasp. Because I remember there were two movies that happened that, like, had no bearing. Like, all we wanted to know was what happens to the team. Like, what's going on? But we had Captain Marvel where it's like, I, I it was hard to care about it. When all we wanted to know is like what is happening to the Avengers. Okay. Um, now we'll go to Endgame. And I think Endgame for me is the number one. I know there's a lot of people that like Infinity War better. But for me, Avengers Endgame is the number one. The culmination and the doing time travel in a way that like makes it make sense. I mean, not make sense, but, you know, like people who don't haven't watched the MCU can like grasp what they're doing. Doing that, you've got. Um, oh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. I think that's what came out as well. Yeah, because at the end of the, the post credit scene, of Ant-Man and the Wasp was the blip, the snap and Scott getting stuck in the quantum realm. That's what it was. Okay. Um, so yeah, M Captain Marvel and Ant-Man and the Wasp came out then. Okay. Yeah, but Endgame, that moment when you see the portal here on your left. What? On your left. And the portal opens up. Oh. I will never forget. I'm getting emotional even thinking about it right now. I will never forget sitting in the theater that night and you see the portal up and Spider-Man... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did we just lose the internet again? No, we're good. Um, I don't know. It's been going out all day. It's been bad. That moment, Spider-Man comes swinging through the portals. And boy, oh boy, oh boy. The theater erupted cheered so loudly for Tom Holland because I mean come on why not you get Captain America standing alone by himself shield shattered against Thanos and what did we all figure out Captain America is worthy he is worthy he holds Mjolnir he fights with it 
get Fat Thor. We forgot about Fat Thor, but but the moment, the moment that we all have been waiting for since the very beginning. Avengers! Assemble. Ah! So freaking good. Oh, so amazing. All right, I already talked about Far From Home. Where did I put it? I think I put it here, right? Yeah. Like it. Didn't love it. I think, Jake, this was like Iron Man or Tony left Peter some stuff and I don't know. It really, really bugged me that in this movie that like Happy just like wasn't paying attention to Peter at all. But yeah. All right. Let's start with some of the TV shows now. Oh, yeah. Start with some of the TV shows. WandaVision. I thought WandaVision was awesome. Actually, no, Captain America, this one came out first. I thought this was fine. Um, I thought it, it got hindered by a bunch of stuff. Obviously, COVID. Um, so I don't, people didn't, if people didn't know, the original storyline was the Flag Smashers, the bad guys, were actually going to be unleashing a crazy, horrible virus on the whole world. Then COVID hit. They changed three quarters of the show and it just did not, they had to reshoot three quarters of it. It just didn't make sense. It was weird. I thought Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Sam were fun, kind of like a buddy cop thing. Um, then who was the other guy? Not the Flag Smashers. The, we got, oh, the guy they replaced. They tried to make Captain America and he kind of went crazy. He was f fine. Kurt Russell's son. Wyatt Russell, I think that's his name. Yeah. But, oh my gosh, was he... He had like a redemption arc at the end. I was like, no, this dude brutally murdered people. Like, on camera. And then he shows up at the end and they're cool with it. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. Uh, WandaVision, I'd go... So, WandaVision for me... It's an interesting one because I would put it probably here because I really loved it, especially the first half of it where it's like um, every single episode is a different era of television. Um, I thought that was super fun, super cool, super unique. But then like you start to see things like something's not what it should be. I thought it was super interesting and super fun. The final episode... I thought was bad. I do not think they stuck the landing. I thought it was... Yeah, and I think actually WandaVision is made lesser than because of the fact, because of Multiverse of Madness. And I will I will get to that in a second. <clears throat> um, Loki. I freaking love this show. Loki was so good. Tom Hiddleston is so good. Owen Wilson is a treat just a delight sylvie's awesome she's a fun introducing the tva and uh he who remains that 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 final episode or two no the second to last episode where you meet every variant of loki so fun it's so fun but that final episode when it's just loki and he who remains and he remains like a 20 minute monologue oh that's so, so, so good. I love Loki. All right, Black Widow. This is F tier for me. I thought this movie was... No, no, because Florence Pugh was awesome. We'll go D tier. <clears throat> Florence Pugh, Pugh was a delight. She was quite good. Yeah. Florence Pugh was good. I enjoyed her. This is the worst CGI I've ever seen in an MCU movie. Um, <clears throat> like it just didn't make sense. It did not make sense. So many things like she's not a superhero. She's not a superhuman. She's a superhero, not a superhuman. The beating that Black Widow took in this movie, it, it's just, I know there's a lot of unrealistic things. It means superheroes, right? Doesn't make any sense. But I did not enjoy it at all. It's so unrealistic. What if... Um, I thought it was interesting. I'd probably go bottom of B tier. I thought it was fun. 
I thought the Ultron stuff was fun. I thought it may it was a super interesting concept, and some of the episodes I thought were not good. Others I thought were really good. We definitely noticed the times where they did not use the main voice or the main actors for it. Um, yeah, that was pretty pretty apparent, and some of them did not do great. Others were awesome. Um, but I'd go bottom of B tier. Shang Chi, I absolutely love Shang Chi. I thought this movie was so fun. It did suffer from some of the same things that Black Widow did with the CGI not being great. Um, you could definitely. This was kind of. They were using the. Uh, I don't remember what their little like CGI room is called, but they were using that a lot more. Um, and you could tell a lot of the lighting was super weird. Uh, the scene where the dad and Shang Chi's mom were like. Uh, first meeting each other, you, it definitely looked like a set. Like the plants didn't look real. Like everything looked fake. But man, I thought when I first saw the trailer, I thought Aquafina was gonna be so bad and so annoying. I loved, I loved her in this movie. I thought this was just a fun. The the combat action was awesome, super well choreographed. Um, the final fights, the final scene was meh. It's kind of a bummer because it just ended up in a giant CGI fight. Just a giant CGI fight, unfortunately. But the rest of it was great. Super fun. Wong was super funny. He's the source of Supreme now. All right, Eternals. Eternals is F tier for me. I am not want to talk about it much. It's going to make me angry. I thought it was so dumb, so bad. Nothing mattered at all. A giant, um, what is it called? What are they called? Not eternal. Titan? Was it a Titan? I can't remember, but a giant, massive humanoid figure emerged out of the earth. And we, uh, that happened here in the timeline and has never been addressed since. Uh, I thought the writing was really bad. The plot was bad. Everything about it, not good. Hawkeye. I really enjoyed Hawkeye. I had a great time with this movie, or this TV show. I thought Haley Steinfeld, 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 Stein, whatever. She was super fun. I thought Jeremy Renner was great. I was a fun Christmas addition to the MCU. Very low stakes. It was crazy seeing the Kingpin. Although this Kingpin was very different than the Kingpin in Daredevil. He didn't seem to have the same physicality, even though he was still huge and massive. I don't know. They like dumbed him down a bit. I didn't love it. Yeah, there's that scene where like, I think it's the last episode where like she's fighting the kingpin and like that would have just snapped people in half but i don't know <clears throat> oh, okay um we'll put no way home came out like here didn't we'll get to that later we'll go moon knight next man moon knight such a missed opportunity I thought part episode or certain episodes that were so good. Uh, there was that one episode where he's like, oh, especially the first like two episodes when you're trying to figure out like what's going on, like what is happening here. Obviously, he's got multiple personalities, things like that. Um, but there was that one scene where he's like in the insane asylum, but he's like in it's an asylum inside his own mind. Oh, so that was so fun, so good. Multiverse of Madness, I, I. I genuinely hate this movie. There's not, even though there's like F tier movies here, there's F tier movies, but I do not hate these other movies. I actively hate Multiverse of Madness. It took something that had such incredible opportunity. And instead, it's like, how, what, what's this crazy multiverse we're going to? Oh, we're going to go to a multiverse where it's New York, but they just eat pizza balls instead of 
regular sliced pizza. That's not like I was expecting like an episode of Rick and Morty or something. What we got was just this weird like Sam Raimi like thing. Like it was and it took everything from WandaVision. Where's that? Where'd I put WandaVision? At all the character growth that Wanda had in WandaVision and like erased it all and did not explain any of it. Like, so she's the villain. Like, she is this monstrous, murderous, like, villain. But, like, she dealt with that in Wanda. That was the whole point of WandaVision was her, like, working through that grief and that suffering and and coming out on the other side like a better person and want multiverse of madness just like acts like that never happened and that is such a missed opportunity we finally see jim halpert as um mr fantastic reed richards we get patrick freaking stewart back we get Haley atwell in the flesh as captain britain it like it's so it could have been so cool and it was not it was not it was just such a letdown of a movie america chavez she was there like she was a thing in the movie that happened but whatever miss marvel okay i i'm gonna put this here Here, um, actually, I can't put it above Avengers or Captain America. I'm going to do bottom. I'm going to put it here. Actually, no, I'm putting it below. I'm putting it right there. And here's why. I think the actress that plays Kamala Khan is a absolute delight. She crushes it. Her family is so fun. The villains are bad and don't make any sense. And the CGI is atrocious. It, like, it is offensively bad in this movie or in this show. Um, but like the family dynamics, her acting, it is definitely a show that is targeted at a different audience than me. And I, so I'm not taking that into account here. I'm just only putting in what I liked about it. Um, it yeah it's just a delightful little like teen comedy um definitely not again targeted at my demographic but it was fun she was such a lovable character i'm really excited even though i'm not excited for the movie the marvels i'm excited to see her in it i think she's like i said super fun such a great addition to it all right thor love and thunder this is probably gonna be controversial <laughs> But I am going to put it here. I had a blast with this movie. I thought it was super funny. Even though it was not, I do not, I totally understand it is not as good as uh, Ragnarok. Nowhere near as good as Ragnarok. I think Christian Bale is absolutely incredible as Gore, the God Butcher. He's on screen for like 10 minutes. Like, what are you doing? Like, he's one of the biggest enemies in the MCU, and you put him on the screen for like 10 minutes and then kill him off. Mm -mm. What are we doing here? You know? Um, Natalie Portman is absolutely jacked in this movie. Again, whatever they pumped into her body, it's nuts because she is huge in this movie. The goats, I know a lot of people don't like it. The goats got me, okay? The goats got me good. That first scene <clears throat> with Thor and the Jean-Claude Van Damme like homage, so, so funny. Him being this like... <clears throat> destroyed broken man too i think that was another thing as well is in the movie he's like a broken man like you see he's just trying to like 
overcome with jokes and but yeah his chemistry with natalie portman's really good all right no way home goes here for me i i again love this movie i think it's so good the ramifications it has for the mcu as a whole is pretty crazy um seeing the three spider-men together was super fun them introducing toby Maguire the way they did just like hey so dumb but it was perfect it was the stupidest thing they call him like a cool youth pastor or something because he's the way he's dressed with like the bomber jacket oh my gosh it's so funny uh willem dafoe is so good as green goblin them ripping your heart out with aunt may man yeah no way home is an incredible movie it's again another kind of one of those culmination movies of like infinity war endgame uh the first avengers like it's the culmination of building to something bigger you get the sinister six together you get the sandman helping at the end you get oh it's so great yeah no way home is awesome i love that movie Mm hmm all right um she hulk i did not finish this i thought it was terrible i did not enjoy this one bit um i don't know where to put it though at least with multiverse of madness it had redeeming parts i cannot in good conscience put it below eternals dark world or hulk I don't, yeah, I didn't finish. I got halfway through the show. No, like three quarters of the way through. And I just like, I can't. I thought the acting was bad. I thought the writing was bad. I thought there was not a lot of redeeming parts of the movie. Werewolf by Night. We're going to put it right at the top of B tier. Actually, mm, actually, I really enjoyed this movie. It was like a one shot, one off, like weird horror I don't know if I can go A, though. We'll go top of B. It was freaky. It was cool. I don't know. I really liked it. I don't have a lot to say about it. Okay, this one I'm going to be pretty negative on. I did not have a good time. Uh, I, I did not love Wakanda forever. I don't think it's a bad movie by any means. I thought uh, Namor, Namor, is what they called him, was really good. I do not like Leticia Wright in this movie. I just, man, I did not think she was good. I, I think whatever that side character she has that turns into Atomic Heart. What is her name? The one that has like building the Tony Stark suit, building an Iron Man suit. Ironheart is what she's called. I thought she's so I thought she was bad. I thought the suit when they get the uh oh man, what's her name? Okoye and the other woman, the other uh Dora Milaje and those like super enhanced suits at the end. I thought those looked so dumb. A lot it's crazy a lot of this movie like my I I here's the thing though. I thought they're tribute to Chadwick was incredible. I thought that moment at the end with Shuri and uh, what's her name? Um, Whereas like, did he freeze? I never freeze. That girl, that woman. Oh, that so beautiful. When you find out he, they had a son together, they kept it quiet. So, so, so cool. Um, I just did not like her in this movie. Yeah, I'm going to put it bottom of B tier. But like the rest of it, I liked. I thought there was still a lot of really good in it. I just, it's so hard, right? When you have the guy that is the Black Panther and then obviously cancer. But Quantumania, 
We're going to go... Here. I think a lot of this movie could have been avoided with a simple conversation. I don't know what... I don't remember her name. But the mom in this, like, literally just tell them what you... Like, there's a reason when big when thanos is coming the first thing mark ruffalo does the first thing bruce banner does is say hey thanos is coming oh we need to add miles morales movie to list okay oh that's a, yes 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 because oh that's right because those are canon now because wait uh secret have you seen the reason the most recent one uh across the spider-verse Yeah, uh, yeah, because of that movie and, and the off random comment, uh, what's his face makes? Yeah, Donald Glover is in it, and then they talk about uh, the MCU world in it, in in one of the fights. So that's canon as well. I'll add those. Um, I'll add those here. I don't know if I can, but I'll try and see if I can. Uh, Whatever. I'll just say where they're at. Okay. Um, where did I put? What was I doing? Oh, right, Quantum Manium. Yeah. The whole the whole movie could have been avoided with a conversation. And if a whole movie can literally be avoided with a conversation, that's not a good. That's lazy. That is lazy writing. And then when they finally get into the quantum realm, and uh, Michael Douglas, uh, the Paul Rudd's like girlfriend, and then the mom are like walking. To wherever they're going and she's like i don't have time to tell you then they walk for the next like 30 minutes of the movie what are you doing you're oh my gosh for someone who's supposed to be a brilliant brilliant scientist janet that's her name janet oh my gosh yeah that movie and then jonathan majors obviously like all the like that dude's lucky to not be in prison we don't know if he will be or won't be um uh, this movie was filmed before all that stuff came out, but he's really good in it. And then what does the final conflict revolve around? Paul Rudd and Jonathan Major just punching each other. Why? Why is that how this movie ends? Like, there's a stupid joke about a guy getting holes in him. Michael Pena, where? Wh I need more. Give me more. Like, what? what are we doing? But then the very end of the movie, that as he's walking with the cake, and then he has the moment of like, wait a second. Wait a second. He has this like freak out moment, and like, oh no, no, we're fine. We're probably fine. That's a cool moment, but man, so what a what a disappointment of a movie. Yeah, Guardians 3. Well, actually, we'll do the holiday special. I thought this was delightful. I'm going to go bottom of A tier. It's so fun. There's no villain in it. It's purely just Drax and Mantis kidnapping Kevin Bacon because Peter Quill's sad that he can't find Gamora or that Gamora left. I loved it. Super fun. Mantis and Drax get blasted at a bar and just dance and party. I don't have much more to say about it. All right. Um, Guardians, Volume 3. I'm putting it there. Oh, this is such a great movie. I really enjoyed it. Really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, oh, that was super funny. I thought... The high evolutionary was great. I thought he was um, terrifying. If you saw him in Peacemaker, uh, he was one of the characters in Peacemaker, the DC show. I thought he was great in that too. Um, but man, uh, everything about it, I just thought was Guardians 3 was so, so good. For me, it's below Guardians 1 though, purely because like it's hard to beat those like initial team up movies for me where they first get the team together. 
Fellowship of the Ring is my favorite Lord of the Rings. Star Wars and New Hope is my favorite Star Wars. So like um, the first ones are usually my favorite. <clears throat> yeah, I thought uh, Groot's like battle armor was funny. Rocket kind of learning about him was heartbreaking, but like fleshed out his character. The only thing there were some like cringy moments in the movie for sure, especially the moment that made me like audibly go, ugh, was the very end of the movie where you like hear Groot say, I love you guys. And I'm just like, no, no, uh uh. And it's supposed to be like the, the imagery is like, hey, we've been with Groot so long, we're supposed to understand what he's saying, kind of like they all do. But like, man, that did not hit for me at all. I thought it was cringy and bad. And now we get to Secret Invasion, huh? Now we get to Secret Invasion. I just finished Secret Invasion this morning. I just watched it, um, watched the first three episodes and finished it this morning. And that's where it goes for me. I thought this was such a disappointment of a show. I thought it was boring beyond all belief. I thought, without spoiling anything for people who haven't seen it yet, because it just recently came out, they open things in the MCU. They open these cans that you cannot put stuff back into. And it... <clears throat> raises questions in the MCU and presents things to the MCU that like they'll probably never address and it's extremely frustrating and also they create the single most powerful being to ever be known in the MCU and then that person just kind of was like, okay, bye. What are you doing? Like you create the single most powerful being in the entire MCU. And then just let them kind of just do their own thing. It's weird, man. It's so weird. I did not think Samuel L. Jackson had it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was just, I was so disappointed. I was bored by it. It cost $200 million to make Secret Invasion. I have no idea where the budget went. I don't know. It. I was so disappointed by it. All right, now. Now it's some good stuff though. Now we got to add the two, uh, the two Spider Verse movies. I don't have a, I don't know how to add anything here, so I'm just gonna say where they go. Are we ready? Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Oh, doggy. Oh my gosh, doggy. Okay, so first off, my Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. I would put that... Dang it, Maverick. Holy crap. Stop it. When that movie came out, it was my favorite Spider-Man movie ever. Ever, ever, ever. So that would put it here. But then I started thinking about it more. I started thinking about all the intricacies of the movie, how how you have uh, everything, the, the voice acting, incredible. The fact that the frame rate of the movie speeds up as Miles grows into himself. Like, that's insane. The fact that the, the moment with the Prowler, when, you, when he figures out who Miles is and all that, it's, the Prowler is terrifying. The fact that they straight up kill Spider-Man in the first five minutes of the movie, like, it's nuts. I think Haley Steinfeld is incredible. 
I, I I think I think every single actor in this movie is so so good. The animation is gorgeous. I've never seen anything like it. I don't have a bad thing to say about it. Like I I do not have a bad thing. So as I started thinking about that, I was like, I think that might be my number one. My that's my number one movie. Okay. So Spider Man Into the Spider Verse currently sits at the number one in the MCU for me. Oh my gosh! But you know what did it for me when I was even considering. Like, because Endgame, Endgame is good, but it has, like, the moment, right? It has Captain America standing down Thanos by himself, beaten, bloodied, his shield is broken. And then he just, and goes to work, and still, then you get the on your left moment. Incredible. So good. You get the Avengers Assemble moment, what we've been all been waiting for. Incredible. But you know what Into the Spider Verse has? See, Griff, you know the mo you know what Into the Spider Verse has? That Avengers Endgame does not, even with the Avengers Assemble moment. Because I'll tell you what. It does have a black protagonist. That's that's yep, it does have that. It's got the what's up danger moment. It's got the what's up danger moment. I I am getting chills right now thinking about it where Miles finally figures out who he is and who he has to be. And he's standing at the top of that skyscraper in New York City. And he jumps off backwards down, 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 but the frame shifts and he's actually rising, ascending. Oh, that is one of my favorite moments in any MCU, any any movie, period. Oh, my good. I'm getting chills thinking about it. Also, his suit is sick, too. His suit is dope. <laughs> okay, so that would be my number one MCU movie. But then, recently... Across the Spider-Verse comes out. And man, oh man, is that a movie. The fact, the opening scene. Okay. Multiverse of Madness. Across the Spider-Verse is what Multiverse of Madness should have been. It's what it should have been. Um, it was so great. All the Spider-Men are so good. All the costumes are great. The, the opening with uh, um, Spider Gwen, Spider Girl, so good. The pastel colors, it's like all paint. Um, I know that a lot of people complained about this uh, when the movie first came out, like the mixing in the first scene when you're in Gwen's world. But the director said, like, it's super intentional. Like, you can't hear anything she's saying, like, because in her head, like, that is all the noise that's going on. Even so, even like that is all intentional. They, the second time I went to see it, they changed the sound mixing so you could hear it. But I was kind of bummed out because I was like, I love that little touch of like, it's hard to hear what she's saying because her in her mind, she's so conflicted about everything. Um, yeah, I think the, the, the villains in it, <clears throat> I mean, not spoiling it for other people, like the antagonist in the movie is terrifying. Every single like, Spider-Man with their like little theme is so good. Excuse me. Um, and I cannot wait for the second one where it leaves us. I was so just like, what? I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know there was gonna, I mean, I knew there was gonna be another one. I assume there was, but I didn't know it was confirmed yet. So like the moment that it, where it leaves us and I didn't, it caught me off guard completely. Nicole caught like Nicole got it pretty quickly. That, that final scene, but I was like, so like, wait, what? Oh my gosh. Um, so I would say my number one movie right now. So I had spider verse into the spider verse right here. I think across the spider verse is probably interchangeable with it. I would say right now when I left it the first time I was like, that's my number one. Number one favorite movie. And I probably will go back and forth on that. 
over and over just because I love so many of the moments. But for me, for me, it did not have that what's up danger moment. And that's what I needed. And I know that in the next movie, what is it called? Uh, so across the spider verse and then, um, what was it called? What was the, what's the next one going to be called? I can't remember. Um, what's the next spider verse movie going to be called? Next. Next Spider-Verse movie is called Beyond the Spider-Verse. That's right. <clears throat> but um, I guarantee you it's going to have that moment because Miles is growing. He's learning. So right now it's interchangeable one and two with Across the Spider-Verse, Into the Spider-Verse. I think they are masterpieces of movies. I think they're just good movies. Take, a, let, take out the superhero aspects of it. There's good, good, good movies. And that is my MCU list. Excuse you. Excuse you. That is my MCU list. So I will read them all off to everyone. Um, so one would be... I'm going to say it right now. I'll say it's Across the Spider-Verse. Number two, Into the Spider-Verse. Three, um, Avengers Endgame. Four, Infinity War. Five, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. Six, Spider-Man Homecoming. Seven, Thor Ragnarok. Eight, Captain America Winter Soldier. Nine, Captain America Civil War. Ten, Guardians of the Galaxy. Eleven, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Twelve, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Uh, Thirteen, Shang-Chi. Wow, did I really rank it that high? All right, uh, 13, uh, Loki, 14, Thor, Love and Thunder. I can't, no, uh-uh, no. 13 is, uh, 14 is Black Panther. As much as I love a lot of the stuff in Love and Thunder, as I think about it more, I cannot rank it above the first Black Panther. Yeah, so 14, Black Panther, 15, Thor, Love and Thunder, 16, Spider-Man, Far From Home, 17, WandaVision. 18, The Avengers. 19, uh, Captain America, The First Avenger. 20, uh, Doctor Strange. 21, Guardians of the Galaxy, The Holiday Special. Shoot, I forgot what I just said. 1, 2, wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 23, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. 24, Werewolf by Night. 25, Hawkeye. 26, Miss Marvel. 27, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. 28, Avengers Age of Ultron. 29, Iron Man. 30, Thor. 31, What If? 32, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. 33, Moon Knight. 34, Ant-Man and the Wasp. 35, Ant-Man. 36, Iron Man 2. 37, Black Widow, 38, Iron Man 3, 39, Captain Marvel, 40 is uh, Doctor Strange Multiverse of, Multiverse of Madness, 41, She-Hulk, 42, Eternals, 43, Thor the Dark World, 34, or 44, Hulk, and 45, or should be the Incredible Hulk and forty-five Secret Invasion, the most boring MCU property. That's it. That's my list. 